The Power 40 podcast is an uplifting faith-based podcast that speaks to all that's going on in our world. And our goal is to share inspirational and real life stories and experiences from notable guests around the country on matters that touch us all. The number 40 symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. And we all experience these trying times in our lives, but it's what comes from these times that make us who we are. And as we depict periods of people's lives where the number 40 has played out, we learn the goodness that comes from perseverance, determination, and belief. I'm your host, Danica Tramberg, joined today by Liz Scott, mother to Alex Scott. Thank you so much for being on today. My pleasure. Now, Alex started battling cancer around her first birthday, but that's something that never stopped her. And she went on to start a lemonade stand in her front yard where she hoped to raise money for other kids battling cancer. And Alex established the goal to raise $1 million, which is just amazing thinking about how kids are not afraid to set those goals. And I really admire that. But sadly, she passed away right after she saw that million dollar goal. But you, Liz and uh, Jay continued her work and to this day have raised over $250 million. And that is just incredible. So um, I'm so amazed by that and and the passion that you have for this and everything that you guys have done. Thank you so much. We're so lucky to do it. And I feel very fortunate as a mom to have this incredible legacy to carry forward. But I guess I would say as a person to, to do something every day that is so meaningful to me. Yeah. What, what were your first thoughts when you heard that was her ambition to raise a million dollars from this lemonade stand? Well, you know, her first idea when she was four was she wanted to have a lemonade stand. And I didn't think much of it because yeah. it, she mentioned it in the middle of the winter and she didn't say what she was doing it for. And she persisted for months asking about it. And finally, I said, you know, what do you want to buy so badly? You keep talking about this lemonade stand. And she said, I'm not keeping the money. I'm giving it to my hospital. And she didn't necessarily have expressed her million dollar goal at that point. Um, And I actually thought it was really cute, right? I was touched. This was in the year 2000. So kids really weren't doing lemonade stands for charity. So I thought it was really cute and meaningful in terms of like being so proud of her. I didn't think it would make a big difference. And I told her that. I said, you're going to raise five or $10. And she said, I don't care. I'll do it anyways. And I think her early success, she raised $2,000, her first stand. And then every stand after that would just grow and grow. And I think those first few stands led her to be inspired to do more because in 2004, so now she's had her stand for a few years, she decided she was going to raise a million dollars. And honestly, I thought I was... I was sad a little bit because she was very sick. We knew she didn't have much time. And this incredible thing she had done in her life, she had raised over $100,000. She had said it was the best thing that ever happened to her. Now she wanted to raise a million and I didn't believe it would happen. So I thought she's going to be disappointed, right? At this point in her life, so much has disappointed her. I don't want her to not reach that goal. But of course she believed and she she believed not just in herself, but she believed in other people. She said, if everybody has lemonade stands or goes to them, we can raise a million dollars. And I think that's really important to mention. Like you talk about believing, right? She believed in other people. She believed in the goodness of people to help her. And she was right. She raised a million dollars and proved me wrong, which, you know, to this day, I'm so incredibly grateful for. It was such a gift that she reached that goal before she passed away. That is something to be very proud of. Um, I mean, when that started happening, kind of what were your emotions or thoughts when you saw these numbers increasing greatly? Oh, gosh, it was, you know, it was such a, um, it was such a busy time, but it was such a hard time for our family because she was so sick and the three other young children that I don't know that I, I reflected on it at the time. I think we knew something amazing was happening and we were so happy that she was going to reach her goal. And we were so grateful for the outpouring of people supporting her goal and reaching it. I think later after she passed away is when I really had time to reflect 
on just how incredible it was and what an incredible gift it was that she got to reach her goal and that we got to witness just the generosity of so many people coming together to make that happen. I love this too, because I feel like it's a story within a story. And not only, you know, the main goal was to raise money, give it to the hospitals, help other kids that, you know, were going through these difficult experiences in life, but also that, like you said, believing in the goodness of people and also going back to that childlike mentality that we, I feel like so often as we have the privilege to grow older, but we get knocked down by the world, what the world says. And, you know, everything gets beaten down a little bit as the years go on. And you don't have that belief either in people or the fact that, you know, others care or even just the courage to set such a big goal for yourselves because you're scared maybe of what other people might think if you don't reach it or, you know, anything. So I think that not only she did so many things, right? She not only raised this huge goal and she set a precedence for everyone and a reminder for everyone that it is so important to believe in yourself and dream big. And I really, really love that. So do I. And I think, you know, she taught me so much in her life, but I, I think that's a lesson that I needed. As you said so well, you know, as you have life experiences that like belief, oh, you can do anything or you can make things happen and other people will help, that does tend to dim over time. And, and she showed me that that doesn't need to be the case, right? Pe- people are incredible and believing in, in setting big goals is always a good idea. The worst thing that's going to happen is maybe you're going to fall short, um, but in the process, you've still done something incredible. So true. And, and there's more things too, that she, you know, set out to do. I know the idea for lemonade days came about. Um, is there anything that sticks out to you about that? Cause that was something about helping kids across the country, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think really, you know, again, reflecting back on it at the time, she was an incredible child and because of her life and, and needing to to be older than she was to to yeah. face the challenges she faced. Um, she she like always had big dreams and ideas. So her idea, though, I think was like genius, right? It's like so simple and profound that she could raise a million dollars if everybody had lemonade stands or went to those lemonade stands. And when you put it that way, it's absolutely true. Right. So, I mean, just, just the idea, you know, so lemonade days came from her million dollar goal and her saying like me saying, how are you going to raise a million dollars? And she said, (laughs) if everybody has lemonade stands and it was just like so pure and simple. And again, showed such belief in other people and the fact that other people cared. um, It's, it's just, it's incredible. And it just shows a lot of vision. You know, she was only eight, but she really did have this great vision for what things could be if we all work together to change something. So amazing. And she has the chance to meet Oprah and there was even a book written in her honor. I mean, tell me about that experience because I know I've always wanted to meet Oprah Winfrey. She's a wonderful woman. And I, I think what a cool thing, cause she's just got one thing after the next just kind of amplified all that she's meant to be doing. And that was such an honor. It was, yeah, it was really uh, probably, you know, one of the like top critical things that happened Mm -hmm. in terms of her reaching her goal. And then this movement that, that lasted like well beyond her life. Um, We got a call. She was very sick. She was in the hospital from a producer from the Oprah show and my husband sort of politely declined because here she was too sick to travel, we thought. And when she found out that it was Oprah calling and he had declined, she said like, this is important. Too many people watch that show. So she asked her doctor and he, through a lot of medications and planning, we were able to get there for the day, for the night and the day of the filming the next day. And she met Oprah and Oprah really gave her a voice and a huge international voice. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a big part of reaching so many more people with her message of like, together, we can do something to change this. And and a big reason why, you know, it carried on afterwards. 
That's so awesome. I, I think too, just the whole idea of in this like series, we talk about the little things and it's all these small things that make up something so great. And even just her one small idea when it mm-hmm. is duplicated over and over again, it becomes so great. Uh, were there any of those small moments that really stuck out to you in the process of this whole journey? Yes, it was a small moment in terms of a mo- like five minutes in her life, mm-hmm. but it was a huge moment, I think, in terms of what it said about her, but what it's the message it sends to all of us. And that was really in the same time frame at the end of her life when she was very, very sick and she didn't want to stay over in the hospital. So we were trying to keep her at home and keep her comfortable, but certain things would happen where we would have to go to the hospital. And this was probably the third night in a week where she needed to go to the hospital for a problem that we couldn't control at home. My husband puts her in the car. She's not feeling well. And he turns around to her and he says, I'm so sorry, because there was nothing else to be said at that point. Um, And she said, for what? And he said, for everything. And she didn't hesitate. She immediately said, if there's one thing you should know about me by now, it's that I'm happy for what I have, not unhappy for what I don't have. And it was so incredibly powerful when you think about what that means in that moment when she could have screamed and she would have been justified. She could have said how awful things were for her, how much she hated this. And instead she had like the, the grace and the peace inside of her to say, and the gratitude to say, I'm happy for what I have. Um, and that was like, a really bad moment. And I think about that, like if you can feel that way in a moment, a really bad moment, you can do just about anything. You can overcome anything. You can focus on the positive things and move forward, knowing there's going to be more happy times in the future. And it was such a valuable lesson to me. Um, And I think really to so many people who I've shared that story with, and I always say like, you might not need to hear that message today, But sometime down the road, you might remember this little girl saying it at the very end of her life when she had every reason to complain, and it might help you get through something really hard. And it's very profound for someone of her age and something that everyone definitely can take into their own lives and apply it in certain ways. And isn't that the truth? Be grateful for what you do have and not focus on things that we're lacking in our lives. I think that's definitely something that everyone should take, take it in and put it in their mind and keep it there and bring it out on a rainy day. But yeah, I always say, keep it in your pocket in case, yeah. in case you need it someday. <laughs> so, so true. Wow. Well, I think we, you know, there's so many things I feel like I could talk to you forever about all of this. I want to hear a little bit more about, um, after she did pass away, how you guys worked to continue her legacy. So we decided uh, shortly after she passed away um, that we had to do something. People were continuing to support, but we weren't sure if we wanted to continue it. We weren't sure if we could continue it without her because she was really the the driver and the face of it. But, um, you know, after talking to different people and actually hearing from a lot of people who said, like, we're going to keep this going. We heard from a lot of childhood cancer families who said, like, Alex gave us a voice. And I'm so grateful to her because my child is still fighting. So that got me because I thought I'm being selfish here, thinking that this is too hard, right? Because something, if something is the right thing to do, it being too hard is not a good reason not to do it, right? You you should do it anyways. And I always tell my kids that just because something is hard, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Um, So we decided to start the foundation thinking we could do something just like Alex said, like, we could do something. We didn't have a big goal. We thought we would see how far we could take it. And it was really the support and the generosity of other people that has made this happen. I mean, we've been, you know, going along, we've been, you know, somewhere between driving the ship and kind of riding on the ship and um, have just seen how willing and happy people are to support in so many different ways. And when you give people 
an easy way to get involved. And Alex taught us that everybody can contribute to this. That's what it's going to take to cure childhood cancer. People are willing to do it. And no matter how tough times are or how good times are, we've just seen that people want to help. And it's just a really beautiful um, thing to be a part of. That is beautiful. And I hope people after hearing this to consider ways that they can help. And just as we close out today and reflect on the power 40 in our lives, maybe trials we're going through or have overcome, I think that we understand that life will continue to experience good and bad that it throws us, um, but that doesn't last forever. And 40 is also a powerful number in regards to time. So if you, Liz, had just 40 minutes to impact the world, where would you start and what would you say? That's a tough one. You know, I thought about this. um, And I think in my heart, my answer would be, I would probably start with my own family. You know, I would have conversations with my kids about, again, but, you know, the the last conversation about um, how they can impact the world, about being a good person, about helping people in need and, Mm -hmm. and, and letting people I care about know how much I love them. And, you know, I, I truly believe that that's where it starts. And I suppose in some ways for me, I guess that's where it ends is, you know, this idea that, um, as a mom, I feel like I can impact the world by making sure that my, my kids are, um, out there in the world, just being amazingly kind and good people. And I think Alex did that. And hopefully my other children have grown up with that idea as well. Well, you're certainly doing something right. So we really appreciate you taking the time just to talk about Alex's story today, your story. Is there something that you can tell people where they can get involved if they're still interested? I don't know if there's like a website or social media that they can follow and engage with or. Absolutely. So it's Alex's Lemonade from all our social media channels and our website is just all one word, Alex's Lemonade, um, or just search for us. We have so many ways to get involved. We have thousands of lemonade stands every year, people of all ages. It's a great way to get kids involved. Uh, We have other events that people can participate in. They can donate, they can give monthly. We make it easy um, for everybody and try to meet people where they are. You know, we've built our organization on a lot of people giving what they can. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to give a million dollars. We'll take a million dollars if you have a million dollars to give. But if you have $3 a month to give, that's fantastic also. That's amazing. Well, there's so many ways that people can help. And I hope that those who listen will find one of those um, and contribute. I think what you're doing is so amazing and continuing her legacy and kindness and spreading positivity to other people is just so important. And we really thank you for everything that you are doing. Well, you're most welcome. And thank you for doing all you're doing to keep positive messages out there. Absolutely. For more on the Power 40 podcast, you can visit powerofhumans.com or stream on your preferred streaming service.